Frank Goldstein, managing partner at Goldstein Law Group, talking about all the insurance scams with us. Thanks for joining us again today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's it's sometimes interesting when we think about these different scams that are going on and we try to get to the root cause and there's a, a small group of people who are running these scams. But today I want to talk about something that I never would have expected. These larger banks, Fortune 500 banks, companies we all recognize are getting involved in insurance scams. What the heck is happening? So let me start from the very beginning, but I'll keep it short. So in order right to run a major insurance fraud scam, what do you need? You need money. You need yep. not only money, you need cash, right? You need cash to pay the runners who are staging the, the auto accidents, and you need cash to pay off the insureds or the willing participants to be involved in the auto crash or to go to a clinic where they're never going to be treated, but they'll sign all kinds of therapy notes. So cash is the very epicenter of that fraud ring. So what's going on is these clinics that are orchestrating these staged accidents and orchestrating the fraud are literally sending people to the banks with humongous size checks, $10,000 plus, cashing those checks and using that cash to pay off the runners, to pay off the insureds, and to pay off the patients. So we need cash to operate. So let me give the benefit of the doubt then. I'm working at a bank. Someone comes in with a check. Everything appears normal. I cash it. I give them the money. I go on with my day. But it's not always that innocent. Right. So you look at it like you're going to go to the bank and you're going to cash one large dollar check. Maybe it's 5000 Maybe it's 10000 But banks have regulations. They have laws that govern them. And some of those laws that govern them are called the anti-money laundering laws, right. whereby when someone comes in and cashes a check in excess of $10,000, there are certain things that the bank has to do to investigate that check. And it's even more so when people keep coming in repetitively in cashing large dollar checks day after day after day after day. There are responsibilities that banks have to the government and to their customers um, in order to investigate those large dollar checks. And that's where the banks are getting themselves in trouble. So I have to imagine, at least for these larger banks, there must be processes and, and systems and automations in place to catch this. So is that not the case? Are we actively skirting those? What, give me the dirty details. It's almost, like, it's almost like you've done this before. It, it's, <laughs> I'm, actually, not, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever research you've done is right. So, yes, there are systems. So there's legal systems and then there are processes that the bank has to have in place to be able to detect what could be money laundering or some sort of fraud going on. And the banks absolutely have systems in place that are supposed to be adhered to so that they can detect and they can stamp out any fraud that may be occurring or money laundering that may be occurring within their bank. The difference though is when you have insiders at the banks, which we did in one of my cases, that are participating with the fraudulent clinics, they are not adhering to those systems. They are ignoring those systems. They are bypassing those systems and cashing those checks freely. So what needs to be done to stop this? Well, listen, some of it is systemic, right? So there is a major bank whose name I will not mention who had gotten themselves into a ton of trouble in the last decade where they were very, very willingly ignoring all the anti-money laundering laws. But what has to happen is there has to be someone at the highest level of these banks that are holding people accountable for these anti-money laundering laws. And the problem was at many of these banks, the bankers were rewarded handsomely for bringing in new accounts. They were rewarded handsomely for all these large deposits. And until that stopped and people stopped being rewarded for allowing fraud to continue, the banks were never gonna stop, ever. Yeah. Yeah, we, we talk a lot in our work and, and with our customers and partners about building a fraud fighting culture. And we say, look, if you really want to put an end to this, it's got to go from top to bottom, left to right. And 
the incentives have to be in the right place, right? Not to just bring in new business or close claims quickly, for example. Um, But yeah, I mean, without that culture, there's just no way to put an end to it. Yeah. And and in fact, in, in one of our more recent cases, we actually got our hands on the proverbial little black book from the clinic uh, that one of the, the crime ring members left behind before they fled to Cuba. And in that little black book were the names of several managers at this bank wow. who were participating with the clinic in the fraud. And not so surprisingly, that branch location where those two bankers work had the heaviest volume of money laundering and check cashing going on. Wow. And the bank and and nobody did a single thing about it at the bank. Millions of dollars in checks cashed. Millions. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I guess the only thing I could think of is the evidence is always going to be out there, right? We have this conversation today. Someone's always going to be able to find it. So I think I was on the record, right? I have not done this before, but I think right. for anyone who does, I, they're going to get caught, right? Yeah. I mean, at, at some point, we're going to get our hands on those bank records. When I sue an organized crime ring, I inevitably get my hands on those bank records, especially if I've won the case on liability. So I'm going to see them. And and, and there's there's only so much you can do with $10,000 checks. I'm going to see that they've been cashed. I'm going to see where they were cashed. I'm going to see who cashed them. I'm going to see how many were cashed in a day. And I'm going to figure out pretty quickly that there has to be somebody inside at that bank Right. That has allowed that check and thousands of them like it to be cashed. Simple. Wild stuff. Thanks for yeah. thanks for sharing this information with us. It's uh, it's always interesting to talk to you and hear about the different scams that are going on out there. We really appreciate the stories. Thank you, and I appreciate you. And I and I, and I actually think that you must have done this before. <laughs> Promise I have it. Feel free to check. Feel free to I check. know you have. I know. Just, I'm just joking. Thanks, Frank. Okay. Thank you.